So we all aware we our body I mean each and every organ is made up of cell and the cell is having a lot of cell organelles okay among those cell organelles nucleus is one okay and nucleus contains chromosomes right and these chromosomes what are they chromosomes are like thread like structures and its composition that means chromat uh, chromosomes they are made up of DNA and proteins so what proteins histones histones are the proteins tightly attached to the DNA okay and a gene how you say a gene that means any fragment DNA is having mm, like uh, uh, enormous length okay so when you separate the DNA okay as a straight chain it will run for kilometers sometimes uh, some people have comparison okay if you segregate the DNA from the cells okay it can uh, reach up to the moon okay that much distance this DNA I mean the length of the DNA varies okay and particular part of the DNA is known as a gene and this gene has a crucial role in coding of RNA and proteins so DNA is a long chain of uh, repeating nucleotides okay and most of the DNA you will be getting in the nucleus and 1% of the uh, DNA you will get in mitochondria okay mitochondria is having their own individual DNA that is known as mitochondrial DNA the main substance of chromosomal material is chromatin chromatin again is made up of DNA and proteins okay the chromosomal DNA forms the genes which are carrying the genetic information chromatin that's what I was talking about histones play a major role and what is the purpose of histones attaching to the DNA okay they give stability to the DNA so first we'll discuss about primary structure of DNA okay and this primary structure is like uh, it's a polymer of two polynucleotide chains okay that means each chain is made up of nucleotides okay that's why I mentioned many nucleotides are that polynucleotides okay each chain is made up of many nucleotides so that's why the two chains are made up of polynucleotide chains okay and they form large deoxyribonucleotides know the difference here okay DNA and RNA deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid so the type of nucleotides for making of DNA okay is also differ in respect to RNA okay only deoxyribonucleotides are present in DNA in RNA ribonucleotides are there okay and the sugar is deoxyribose a nitrogen basis purines 2 are in number adenine and guanine and pyrimidines again 2 though there are 3 pyrimidines but DNA having only 2 out of 3 only 2 are there one is thiamine other one is cytin cytosin and in the picture you see here the backbone okay this is the sugar this is the phosphate and these all sugar and phosphates are making the uh, backbone of the DNA okay by phosphodiester linkage so this is the phosphodiester linkage okay and where these bases present the bases present inside the two strands inside of the two strands okay so adenine uh, uh, linked to thymine by hydrogen bonding and cytosine also combined with uh, guanine with hydrogen bonding and the number of hydrogen bonding is also varies okay between the bases so that also we will discuss in detail so DNA secondary structure this is a very popular model to explain the DNA structure okay and this DNA secondary structure proposed or discovered by Watson James Watson and Crick okay by using the technique x-ray crystallography they have identified the helical structure of the DNA okay helical structure of the DNA and according to this secondary structure okay DNA consists two very long helical and polynucleotide strand okay and these two strands are twisted together like a ladder okay if you take a ladder ladder is straight okay if you twist the ladder how it appears the same way the DNA is also looks as they proposed in the their secondary structure theory okay it is a coil like a staircase or ladder okay it's shaped like a coiled staircase or ladder and according to them 
the sugar and uh, phosphate will be outside i mean making outline backbone and bases will be packed inside okay the outside ladder is formed by pentose and phosphate backbones and purines and pyrimidines of each strand okay as we are talking here uh, dna the bases present purines adenine guanine and pyrimidines thymine and cytosine okay and this secondary structure of dna has to follow a chargaff rule what is chargaff rule that means number of purines equal to number of pyrimidines so we have two purines so though we have three pyrimidines uracil is not in use so two pyrimidines okay that means two purines two pyrimidines so and the base pairing is also okay adenine always pairs with thymine okay irrespective of the uh, uh, like uh, bases purines and pyrimidines adenine always paired with thymine with two hydrogen bonds okay you see here two hydrogen bonds here i have ma marked here adenine and uh, two hydrogen bonds adenine and thymine and guanine always paired with cytosine with three hydrogen bonds you see here guanine and cytosine three hydrogen bonds okay so this is called chargaff rule okay adenine always binds to the thymine and guanine or cytosine they are always pair okay so adenine to thymine two hydrogen bonds are there and guanine to cytosine three hydrogen bonds are there and this base pairing with their hydrogen bonds is very very important keeping the two strands together base pairing rule just now we have discussed adenine always binding with thymine by two hydrogen bonds and guanine by uh, joined to cytosine by three hydrogen bonds okay the sequence basis in one strand that means uh, if suppose in one strand here adenine is there okay the other strand it obviously it has to be thymine okay and if it is guanine here it should be cytosine so this way the bases which are present in one strand always directs the opposite base in the other strand that means what you can call it as a complementary base pairing okay this is called complementary base pairing the two strands of uh, double helix, uh, helix are anti parallel that's what i was telling that means two strands are there so one strand is running uh, running from one direction 5 prime to 3 prime and other strand is running from five uh, you can say 5 prime to 3 prime direction opposite one strand 5 prime to 3 prime and other strand will be like uh, 3 prime to 5 prime okay this way it can be running in the picture as you are, you can see here one strand is running in 5 prime to 3 prime okay and other strand from bottom it is again 5 prime to 3 prime so both strands are opposite okay there uh, the both strands are opposite okay and out of these two strands okay out of these two strands only one strand of dna acting as a coding strand okay out of these two strands only one uh, that means as i say dna replication only one strand is required for making of rna also one strand is required that means both strands okay though uh, for dna synthesis two strands are there it has to convert it into two single strands and these two single strands again forms the new strands two double stranded new dna molecule okay but in case of protein synthesis okay so double stranded dna is there and out of these two strands of the dna only one strand will be useful to synthesize to synthesize rna that is known as coding strand okay that is known as coding strand the other strand is known as non coding strand or nonsense i mean like uh, non -temp non template strand okay the synthesis of uh, DA, rna from dna is known as transcription okay and the formation of protein from rna is known as translation